Hey guys, um, today in this video we are going to talk about SSRF in APIs. So we will have a little introduction of server-side request forgery. We will have a look at the mini lab that I set up on my computer. And then we will also look at how you can exploit SSRF to fetch AWS metadata, what it is even and how it works and what's the impact everything we are going to discuss in this video. So keep watching. Some of you already know and for those who don't, server-side request forgery occurs when an attacker tricks a server into making unauthorized requests to other servers or internal server. In simple terms, it means the attacker can manipulate the server to access internal systems or external resources that it shouldn't be able to reach. Let's have a look at this example. So I have this mini application app.py and it is using Flask. And I can access this on my local host. Now we have to do a little assumptions here because in case of SSRF, an attacker can access the local host when not authorized. But in this case, the application is already hosted on local host. So we have to pretend that it is not hosted on local host. Anyway, so this is how it looks like in the browser and here you can enter the image URL and this is going to fetch that image for you and display it to you on the web page. Now this application is supposed to fetch images from a particular resource. So it cannot make requests to external resources or internal URL. So let's copy an image URL and paste it over here, click on fetch it. And we can see that it does fetch the image for me. Now if I open up this Python file, this is simple code. And you can see that it is not validating the URL, it just takes any URL and fetches the image. Now. This is vulnerable code because if the backend code is like this and there is no validation of the user input, a user can input some random URL or a URL that is internal. Now in cases where you want to check if the application is making requests to external resources which it is not allowed to do so, you can use Interact SH. You can find this on GitHub. I'll give the link in the description. Now you can just run the interact sh client and you will get a URL. Now you can copy this and of course you have to add https colon slash forward slash and send it. And if the application makes a request, you will see it in the logs of interact sh client like this so it will prove that the application is indeed vulnerable to ssrf now in case of internal resource you can provide local host ip address or aws metadata ip address okay we will go in detail about what aws metadata and what the ip address of that is and how it works and what's the impact of it Okay, let's move on to that part then. Now you must be wondering what is AWS metadata. You might have seen some blogs or reports talking about how they were able to exploit SSRF and they were able to fetch metadata of AWS server. So we're gonna have a look into it with detailed explanation. So there are some terms that you need to understand. The first term is EC2 instance. So what is that? An EC2 instance is like a virtual computer in the cloud provided by Amazon Web Services, basically AWS. So you can use it to run applications, host websites, and perform tasks just like you would with a physical server. You're basically doing it in the cloud. Now, obviously, this is in the cloud and this virtual computer has its own IP address, right? So this IP address is also called magic IP because it is a special IP address and used by default within the Amazon Web Services. It is 
So this IP address is used for accessing instance metadata and user data from within an EC2 instance. So this IP address is used to retrieve various configuration details, credentials and other metadata about the EC2 instance. So obviously it is sensitive. Now this EC2 instance IP address should be accessible only inside the EC2 instance or AWS and any other user shouldn't be able to access it because of security reason and that's why it is internal. It is similar to something you can say if I'm hosting a web application on my local host and that web application is sensitive and is using some sensitive operation but I know that it is in my local network so nobody else should be able to access it right but because of the SSRF a person can actually make a request to the local host IP address and access that web application it is similar to that but it is happening in AWS cloud server I hope it is making sense now now if you find an application and you looked at the all the requests and responses in the HTTP history of Burp Suite and you found a parameter let's say URL equals or file equals something along those lines now you can also use a word list of SSRF parameters to fuzz for that but my main point is let's say you find a URL okay now you want to test it for SSRF and you also know that the application is hosted on AWS. Now this is the main point. If the application is not hosted on AWS, then there is no point of giving it the AWS metadata URL because you're not going to get anything. So make sure the application is indeed hosted on AWS. Now once you know that, you can provide this particular URL, the magic IP forward slash latest forward slash metadata now if the server is vulnerable it will request the metadata url and return the sensitive information through which attacker can gain unauthorized access to aws environment so what basically it returns it returns instance id instance type what's the local host name the mac address public host name you can also access the IAM credentials by using this URL first you have to find the IAM role so the URL would be forward slash latest metadata IAM info and it will give you the role ID and role name now once you have the role name you can use this URL to fetch more information about that particular role like access key ID token and secret access key now this is very sensitive because if someone gets access to it they can perform unauthorized actions on your AWS resource like reading data from s3 buckets launching or terminating EC2 instances that's why the severity of this vulnerability can be critical can be from 9 to 10 in case of the CVSS score researching on this video so there are some interesting blogs that i came across while researching for this video and i'll give the link in the description you can check them out for more detailed information and how they actually exploited it i like to make my video short and simple so i hope it is clear to you now and if you have any other questions you can comment them down i'll check in so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one